very good rebounding team. These are arguably the two best rebounding teams in the country. This is expected to be another physical game. Without question, and it's going to start with the post play inside. Very physical. Karen Aston told us the one thing we need to do because we want to run is get on the boards. Vital for both teams. Yeah, re rebounding is critical for a couple of reasons, and for Baylor, it's important on the offensive end because it is their best defense in transition. This is not a team that gets up and down quickly, particularly our post players. If they hammer the offensive glass, Texas takes it out of the net and hurts Texas's transition. Baylor wins the tap, and for the first time tonight, we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, a fun matchup to watch tonight will be two of the guards. Brooke McCarty of Texas and Christy Wallace of Baylor are two of the quickest, most experienced guards in the Big 12. They love guarding each other. They both average almost five assists per game. Look for that matchup to be thrilling tonight. A couple of veterans going at it tonight. LaShawn Higgs ties the game at two. And what do we see to start the game? Both teams starting out in man-to-man. -man. Baylor looking to exploit their bigs inside. Texas going to their strength. Dribble penetration by guards. It's a very reliable starting five. Not as deep of a Baylor team as last year, but still very explosive offensively. And they've been one of the best defensive units in the country this year. That's a double dribble. Cox did not realize that she had picked it up and an early Baylor turnover. You know, Karan Goudreau showed us some pretty good defensive moments in that game against Connecticut, going up against quicker defenders or quicker post players offensively. And that's a nice job there where she takes away Cox's airspace and forces a travel. Higgs. Here comes Baylor. This is Wallace, the veteran guard out of Australia. And Kalani Brown, even with defenders starting to blitz her, she's able to finish. You know she wants to go right shoulder and power it up. Multiple defenders there. It doesn't matter. She's too big and strong when she coaches that, catches that close. This is the first time in my life that Jatari White has looked, White has looked, has looked small. <laughs> yeah. And she has a very nifty move against Kalani Brown there to tie it. And that's what she needs to do. I mean, it, it, your, your strength or her strength against Brown is quickness, and she needs to utilize that. You got to get around her because you're not going to go over her. Six, seven, going up against White at six, four. Brooke McCarty. Speed of Wallace, end to end. Right, this is exactly what Holly was talking about, this excellent matchup of McCarty and Wallace. Last two possessions, Kara. What does Texas look to do offensively? Involve Kalani Brown's player in a pick and roll. Try to get her out defending on the perimeter. That time, a nice job by White to roll to the basket. Yeah, I thought Atkins handled that with great composure. I thought McCarty maybe forced or rushed uh, the jump shot on the possession before. Uh, you can afford to hesitate if you're that guard coming off uh, and, and, and have the defense show you their cards. That, that's essentially what you're doing as a guard coming off is trying to analyze and trying to see, hey, what is the defense doing? Are they switching? Are they trapping? And I, I thought Atkins, her speed and her pace right there what, was where it needs to be when coming off those ball screens. And the post just hoping the guard does the right thing so they can deliver them right. the basketball. Boy, Karan Gaudreau and Cohen were battling for the rebound. Brian Hall and Cameron Inoue with a quick discussion. And it's going to be ruled a jump ball. And boy, Kim Mulkey's already apoplectic with a couple of the calls made tonight. Well, I thought the jump ball happened first, like right there. Yeah. And then over the top, okay, yeah. But, sure. But I, I thought the jump ball happened first. So you thought that was a fair call? Yes. And Kim Mulkey saying, you're right there. You have to make that call. No good for Higgs. By Wallace in a blur. Does it again, end to end. She is so quick with the basketball. A rhythm shot from Atkins is short.
Brown had it stripped. Numbers for the Horns. That's a beautiful ball fake. Excellent assist by Ariel Atkins. Well, that's the second time that Higgs has dug in from the weak side and wreaked some havoc. The first forced a turnover because her man cut back door and Baylor passed it out of bounds. The second, she gets a steal. So you can be opportunistic on the weak side against Baylor. Look to wreak some havoc by going off your man. And that has been an issue as of late for Kalani Brown. If there has been an issue the last few games, 11 turnovers the last couple of games for the six foot seven junior. This has got to be one of the rare games where Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox are not getting immediately doubled on the catch. They are getting an opportunity to, to go one on one against their defenders. Our eyes has got to light up uh, when you when you get that. Uh, you know, when you're Kalani Brown, you've seen a steady that not just two, sometimes three defenders, yeah. sometimes yeah. triple team. Wrong to draw. It's not just the position for Kalani Brown. It is that frame that forces you out of her area for that rebound. But stripped by Higgs. That'll be a foul on Cohen. So here's what I like from Texas. I like that they're pushing, but it's also the secondary break. So Baylor's back, kind of, right? Not all the way. And Atkins looks to attack. I like that action. And Cohen tags her on the arm. But Texas needs to look to probe. They need to look to attack before Baylor gets its defense set. Atkins ties it at nine. Tough take and a good one by Brown. You can't do anything with that with one defender. You have to send a second player because Jatari White, I mean, she's just getting overpowered. That's a beautiful wraparound pass by Higgs to White. Well, this is some good offense at both ends. Okay, mark this down because it doesn't happen very often. What you got? People don't realize how tiring it is to bang in there, right? And so the job that Jatari White is doing and the job that Kalani Brown, the pressure she's putting on Jatari White, they're not even moving and it's tiring. It's just exhausting. There's nothing more exhausting than that. You go to practice, we would much rather run sprints up and down the court than bang inside and defend offensively and defensively. Takes your legs away. It is tiring. Tiring, yeah. Already two fouls on Audrey Ann Karangadro for Texas. So they have to dip into their bench with Jordan Hosey, junior out of Pearland. And remember, as we look at these two rosters, Texas is the team that has more depth. Yes. Texas is the team that can afford a little bit of foul trouble. And this is the first on Kalani Brown as she hooked Jatari White. Well, Brown is out high now. Cox is the one guarding Jatari White. McCarty will trigger. Cox just as good of a rebounder. In fact, she's second in the Big 12 with 10 rebounds per game. Lauren Cox averages a double-double and then passes the ball really well and plays really good defense. That time, Hosey couldn't do anything with Brown, yep. so she Texas just wrapped her up. That was clearly a foul inside. And I think Karen Aston recognizes that too and recognizes that Jatari White has worked really hard in these first five minutes. And Joyner Holmes, who's playing just her ninth game of the season after a suspension, is in the lineup for Texas now. McCarty the rebound. Cardi was thinking about it. Got to find Joyner Holmes right now. This match. The denial by Cox. Atkins is going to pull up. 
And not a touch inside on that possession for Texas. They didn't have a great angle to get it in there, but they needed to find one. There's that matchup, Wallace and McCarty. Higgs the step through for Hosey. But Higgs tried to volleyball it back in, and a foul is called. We'll step aside. Good pace for him. Two brothers. Her teammates were there for her at the end. Those nursing her in her final days were her teammates from that 2005 national championship team. The sisterhood that they started here together was there. Through her final moments, our, our prayers go out to her and her family. Yeah, absolutely, Holly. I had a chance to play with Shamika, Shamika in the WNBA in Sacramento and appreciated her as a teammate. She was consistent, she connected with everyone on the team, and she was really easy to get along with. So rest in peace, Scotty. We're going to miss you. Starting guard on the 2005 National Championship team. She was 33 years of age. First diagnosed in 2015, had seemingly recovered from it. It came back aggressively in January, passed away on Sunday. Dakia Cohen has two fouls. Dee Dee Richards is on the floor for Baylor. A two-point lead for the Lady Bears. Holmes against Brown. That's a nice job on yep. both ends of the floor. Good move by Joyner Holmes on the offensive end. Defensively, something a little different. She's three-quarter fronting, using her quickness to get around Brown and try to prevent her from getting the basketball. Good look for Alexis Morris. Richards to Brown, and there's the first foul on Joyner Holmes. So... Karan Gaudreau, two fouls. Holmes has one. Jordan Hosey has one. So some of the front court depth getting hit a little early. And if you're Texas, you're okay with giving up that baseline jump shot. That's what you want. What you're not okay with is giving up the offensive rebound. And Baylor is monstrous on the offensive boards. One of the best in the country. Saturday on ESPN, the fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Trey Young led Oklahoma to a win against Kansas the other night. They'll take on Alabama at 2.15 Eastern time. We'll have Holly on the call for Texas A&M in Kansas from Fog Allen Fieldhouse, and then Kentucky in number seven, West Virginia. All three games on ESPN and the ESPN app. Great doubleheader on ESPN2 for the women's college basketball fans. 4 p.m. Notre Dame, Florida State, 6 o'clock, Missouri, South Carolina rematch. I think it's interesting at the top of the ACC right now, it's a very clear-cut separation. Four teams, and then you have that middle pack, but those four teams slugging it out. We saw Louisville knock off, or uh, Florida State rather, knock off Louisville at the Yum Center the other day in a rock fight, 50-49. to 49. A target from Atkins, and a foul is called against Texas. Second on Hosey. Quick shot for Texas in transition. And if you're going to have a rebounding fight, you take the Baylor front line versus anyone in the country. I mean, Lauren Cox and Kwani Brown, 19 boards a piece, a piece. The last time out against Kansas State. You know, one of the things that's a little surprising for me early on, Rebecca, is you know, I thought transition would favor Texas. And Christy Wallace has been a one-woman fast break. I mean, she's got three field goals, and all three of those makes are have come because of her pushing the basketball and almost getting to the rim every single time. And oftentimes without numbers. Yep. One on three, one on four. But it never feels like she's forcing anything either. That's a sign of a veteran guard. Boy, that is a very difficult drive and shot from Ariel Atkins, but it will send her to the line on a Lauren Cox foul. So, as 
I like Texas's approach in the half court. It's actually been better than I anticipated. Uh, their guards getting to the rim. They have multiple guards that can attack. McCarty and Atkins, the seniors. Higgs is having a career year as a junior. And, and that's what they're doing. And, and remember, that this is, I mean, been fa how many fouls called now on, on, on either side? I mean, it, there's been quite a few fouls 11 called. 11 fouls combined. If you're playing the long game, this is an advantage for Texas just because of the depth. Well, guys, I'm sitting at the baseline where Texas is trying to drive in against these tall players of Baylor. It is oppressive trying to get into the hoop there. They're trying to draw fouls on these Baylor guards, that's their Baylor posts, and that's what's getting them to the free throw line. But right here from field level, these two posts playing together, it's oppressive down low. I mean, Holly, you and I and the rest of us were all in South Bend last week watching that Tennessee length. There's some of that length on this, on this defense as well. Big time shot. Wallace is up to a red hot start tonight. Holly finds it oppressive. I find it, <laughs> I find it a thing of beauty. <laughs> well, I mean, for Holly and I, it's a little, it is a little oppressive. We have very, this is the view that Holly Rowe has, so she has the best view in the house of how oppressive it is down there. See, we, we sympathize with Brooke McCarty being five foot four, the senior out of League City, Texas. Stuff that happens in the paint is just stays in the paint. Stays in the paint. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's what it's the new motto for the paint, if you were curious. I mean, to be completely honest, it's why I worked so hard on my three point shot when I was a player, because then I never had to go in there. I, I have claustrophobia done. Like I can't breathe. There's so many big people down here right now. There you go. Brenda, uh, Brenda Pantoa wants to talk with Cameron Inouye about something very quickly here. Last possession, Kim Mulkey came right out and started talking to the official during action. So there was something she saw that she didn't like. I think she I'm thinks one of her players got hit in the face. I, th I think that that's probably something that she might be asking about here. Well, fortunately, you can have a monitor review. Very exciting when we get those. Oh, love them. Brian Hall, Brenda Pantoa, and Cameron Inouye again are officiating crew tonight. This has become an expectation between these two teams, physicality. So if there is something that Kim Mulkey was asking about in regards to something like what we think it potentially could be, it wouldn't be a shocker considering the way that these two teams have played over the last 12 months. And frankly, there's never enough in arena ice, ice baby to go around. And if there is a blessing in disguise of this stoppage in play, it is exactly that, my friend. So Brenda's gonna be nice enough to come over and let us know. The question was if there was an elbow in the previous play, sure. uh, but Brenda said we're out of the time frame, so he cannot review the play. Okay. I think Karen Aston is upset about the stoppage itself. Yeah, I, I, me too. I mean, there's I'm not some, there ice, some, ice baby. <laughs> like I said, if there is a blessing, that's the one. But I think, yeah, the pace was going pretty fluidly, so I can understand why Karen Aston wasn't pleased about it. Kim Mulkey was doing her due diligence. And again, if there's at this point no ability to review, although now Brian Hall is over at the monitor. Because typically if you're gonna review something like an elbow, potentially a flagrant foul, there is a time frame within the immediate action of the play happening. Or oh, a preference to review. Excuse me, I have another conference. Uh, 
All right. Now we've been told that it is in the window to review. Okay. I think the reference initially was towards a different play. Yes. So this is the free throw that is under review here. We saw the elbow from Joyner Holmes maybe make contact. Yep. Seemingly made contact with Christy Wallace. And just a contact between Joyner Holmes and Christy Wallace. So I would imagine that's what's under review. After all of that, seemingly there has not been a call made in reference to that foul shot. So we continue with an inbounds for Baylor. If anything changes, we'll ask the officiating crew between quarters. Perhaps we'll get an explanation. Otherwise, there is no grounds for a flagrant foul. Cox, tight move. And great defense. Joyner Holmes made her catch it out away from the basket, stayed between her and the basket. That's just solid post play by Lauren Cox. Her versatility has been on display all season long. Higgs, a turnover. Let's go to Holly Rowe. So we just had that lengthy delay for a review or a non-review, but Karen Aston's very frustrated about it. I heard her talking to the official saying, that's what she does. Don't let her get away with this. She's upset that Kim Mulkey is seeming to dictate action to the officials and forcing them to have lengthy reviews and stop the play. Don't let her do that. That's what she does. She's very frustrated right now. Yeah, I think we saw that too, Holly. She came out, was basically upset about the lack of pace because of the slowdown during the review. That's what six foot seven does, just reaches over the top of everybody, Kalani Brown. Largest lead at eight for Baylor. That's what Holly was talking about, going into the trees. There's an offensive rebound for White. But she's working so hard to try to get a clean look. It is very hard to do. And White is not a great passer out of the double team. You saw the first time she caught the ball, the double came. She struggled to get it back out. The second time, it, it turns into a turnover. That's one of the things on the scouting report. You got to know which bigs are good at getting the ball out of the double team. She can struggle with that. And if you're Texas, you need to exploit that they're double teaming. I mean, I'm not interested in watching Joyner Holmes spend the entire offensive possession 18 feet from the basket. Go in there and rebound. Cut to the basket. Do something. Because what makes you an effective player is nothing outside of 18 feet. There's the blitz on Wallace. Cox saved it, and a foul is called with 2.6 left. Wave out that basket attempt. As Alexis Morris banked it in from a difficult angle. They'll get Higgs with her second foul. So a physical first quarter, as we expected. 13 fouls called between these two teams. And it's Cox at the line. The challenge when you play Baylor, and it's, it's what makes them so good, is that they force you to play their way. Like, you have to play their way. They're not going to have it any other way. You have to account for their bigs and play their style, and they've done that in this first 10 minutes. Wallace, at the end of the quarter, disrupted any chance for a Texas shot. And Baylor has a 10-point lead on route. All of you right now, she thinks that her energy that she's bringing is embarrassing the Texas Longhorns. She needs more firepower right now. She said, you're all trying to play hero ball, one pass and a bad shot. That's not how we're going to get back in this. Lobo, that's what you talked about. There are a lot of possessions where Joyner Holmes was outside the arc, never went into the paint to either rebound or get a touch. We'll see if that's an improvement for Texas here in the second. Richards being hassled. I thought that was an offensive foul. I thought she it doubled is. her. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. They, they will yeah. call the offensive foul. Yep. There's the shoulder in. That's what Kara does to me when she's trying to make a point <laughs> over here. 
Oh, mine are flagrant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching the elbows, guys. All right, be careful over there, please. Shug Sutton off the bench for Texas. Karanga Dro. She will not beat the shot clock. Not so, seeing a lot of touches right now for Texas. Not a lot of ball reversal. Karanga Dro, though, only four minutes in that first quarter because she has two fouls. She's important to them. Carrie, we were talking about this in the break because of her ability to face up and hit the perimeter jump shot. Post to post pass. Cox with a difficult attempt. Now it'll be Texas ball on the possession arrow. McCarty. Hey, McCarty's got to pull that if she's going to yep. go under. She has been... Uh, Quiet by any means, but a little bit more hesitant to shoot so far. Remember, McCarty was in that awful shooting slump over the first part of Big 12 play. The last couple of games against Connecticut and then Texas Tech has been a little bit better, but not where we expect McCarty to be and not where she expects herself to be. Well, I understand that you don't want to fire, you don't want to have a no-pass offense. So I understand that. Absolutely, But if yeah. they're consistently going to go under ball screens on Brooke McCarty, she's got to be ready to shoot that ball behind the, behind the screen. Morris, no. Look at Atkins just weaving through the entire defense. That's her first field goal. Morris, this time she connects. Enjoy going under a screen set by Kalani Brown, too. That's a lot of area to cover. <laughs> Yeah, it's not just the space she takes up in the pain, it's the space she takes up anywhere when she's trying to do something positive for the offense. I thought Atkins knocked it out, and that will indeed be the call. And Lauren Cox has done a great job as a help defender. And she's sagging off of the high post player for Texas. When she saw her teammate fall down, look, Lauren Cox fr comes from almost the top of the key to affect that shot. Thought she got fouled? I thought so. I thought, thought there was I, some contact I for there. sure thought you would say she got fouled. I didn't see. I didn't see it on the replay. I was. You like protecting the shooter. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm for <laughs> protecting the shooter. I just. I didn't see it on that replay. Did she get tagged? A little bit on the wrist. Yeah. yeah. All right. But she's driven shooting. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just trying to avoid the elbows here, guys. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> Baylor's up a dozen. Richards working hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very exciting moment here, Maria. We're not going to give away the winner. I, we may show it to you if time allows. We'll let you experience what we all got to experience here at the Ferrell Center. Well, right now, Baylor has the dozen point lead, their largest. The Jatari White banging down low with Kalani Brown. A long jumper from Holmes. And there will be a foul here. Let's go back a few moments here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, she's gonna do it! She's gonna do it! She's gonna do it! Oh, yeah! Those other kids have no interest in their eyes. Oh look, here she goes. <laughs> We were crushed. We, Holly actually requested an interview with the winner. <laughs> oh, okay. Shut down. Yeah, yeah, shut down. down. Like, yeah. you have to go through that baby's PR department before. It was unbelievable. Even, amount of even, red tape. That's unbelievable. even the great Holly Rowe was not able to get that interview because of the PR department for that baby. Like Karen Aston's frustration is very apparent right now. Holmes picks up that foul. And Richards was the inbounder here and ended up throwing it away. A very perky, jerky sequence here. Well, McCarty got rid of Wallace on the drive. That's a strong rebound by Holmes. Better defensive play by Lauren Cox. 
Baylor, one of the more impressive defensive teams in college basketball this season. There is Brown. There's that blitz. Richards on the back side draws the foul. Yeah, I tell you, McCarty's had some missed assignments defensively in this first half that are uncharacteristic of her. So it's just diagonal and down action. They went to the stagger on the weak side just to occupy the defense and have Kalani Brown be one on one. Atkins goes to double team. McCarty's responsibility as low man is to box out. She doesn't, and Richards gets to the free throw line. So again, there's the double team, there's the dive, right? McCarty's got to be there boxing out Richards, even though that's not her man, that's your assignment as low man on the weak side. Now the lead is up to 14, it's largest. The Texas backcourt, as Andy Landers was referring to in the studio, has not gotten going just yet offensively. And it's McCarty. Nothing there. Holmes into Brown. And a blocking foul is called on Kalani Brown. That is her second foul. In the restricted area. Well, I don't think she was there either. I mean, I, I think she tried to get there, but I, I think it would have been foul. Regardless. Regardless, yeah. Texas offense looking a bit different the last couple of possessions. Ineffective early when they were trying to get the ball inside and then back out when the double teams came. So they're not looking at, for the post entry anymore. A little bit more dribble penetration and it's what Holmes can do so well as a big. Is she's got the quickness and the strength to take it hard to the rim. And think about how unusual this is. Joyner Holmes, just her ninth game of the season, having to kind of rejoin the team midway through the year. She was not enrolled in school in the first semester. She went home to the Dallas area and actually had a job. She was working in the HR department of a business that was helping victims of Hurricane Harvey that were impacted. And now she's had to come back and quickly get up to speed with her team. She was in pretty good shape when she got back, but obviously she's had to get in game shape, but even more mentally just pick up in the middle of the season and, and have an impact talking to her before the game today and asked her where her confidence was and she said on a scale from one to ten I'm only at a six and a half right now and when we saw her play last year that was one of the things that was striking how confident she was where does it come from Lobo where does that confidence come from do you think it comes from success in practice and then transferring it to the game and, and you can only build confidence through success Wallace is gonna get another shot Baylor is ruling the glass as they have all season long, and they've got a 15-point lead. Atkins offensive foul. Richards has made some nice plays off the bench. Uh, offensive rebounding, and here's a defensive play, just being in the right spot, drawing that offensive foul. The offensive rebounding for Baylor has been incredible, and it shouldn't be a surprise. It's been that way all season long. They get 44% of shots that they put up at the basket back. And when you do that, I mean, you're going to give yourself, you're going to safeguard your offense against a bad shooting night by just giving yourself extra opportunities. That whole sequence by Wallace was impressive. Sutton. Boy, everything with the finish there. Baylor's looking like a well-oiled machine. Cohen. But you're not competing. When Texas beat Baylor in Waco a year ago, after the game, Karen Aston said, we played with such a high level of confidence. It's something Rebecca Lobo was just referring to a moment ago. They have to find something here that gives them an extra gear because Baylor is two steps ahead of Texas right now. You said it earlier, a couple plays ago, Texas everything but the finish. The difference is Baylor's been everything, including the finish. And to Kara's point, when they haven't, they've gotten the old board and put it back in. Natalie Cho. Let the show. Higgs, 
patient take. And now Kim Mulkey will use a timeout here. There's more level uh, on the front line, and Texas can maybe get Jatari White going, can maybe get some opportunity. And their guards are attacking the basket without the fear of running into the wall that is Kalani Brown. So Cox is essentially playing the five against Jatari White right now for Baylor's defense. McCarty sticking right with Wallace. Little in and out, little step to the left, and a little bit of a soft touch for Alexis Morris. McCarty is 0 of 5 from the field so far in this game. Texas shooting under 30%. For six. Richards needs help. Should be an offensive foul on Wallace. Well defended by McCarty. A little bit of an extension with the left arm. I thought McCarty beat her to the spot as well. So Wallace will get a breather. And Juicy Landrum, the sophomore out of right here in Waco. A big get last year in Kim Mulkey's recruiting class. is into the game. We got a Suge in this game. We got a Juicy in this game. Got a game. Juicy. We got a Moon Harrison in this game as well. Cho knocked it away from White. McCarty sees the clock. Out of bounds to Baylor. Really good defense. Uh, uh, excellent defense. Uh, I mean, the way they're working, the way they're utilizing their their strengths. I mean, Lauren Cox utilizes her length so well. An intelligent player on the defensive end of the floor. And they just, Texas can't find an opening. Everything feels like a force, doesn't yeah, it? it does. Everything Nothing feels, feels like, easy. Yes. Tonight. Baylor fourth in the country in scoring defense. First in the country in field goal percentage defense. They've got the best three-point percentage defense in the Big 12. They out-rebound their opponents by 20 per game. That's the best rebounding margin in the country. And outside of their one loss to UCLA, the closest game that they've had, they beat Oklahoma a couple of games ago by 22. That was the lowest margin of victory for Baylor in their 17 wins this year. And a lot of that has been done on the defensive end. A wise woman once called their defense oppressive. <laughs> well, remember in that UCLA loss, they, they did not Lauren have Cox or Kim Mulkey. Or Kim Mulkey. She was not on the sideline for that game. And Hosey out of control, and Natalie Cho went crashing into the stanchion. And she's back up quickly. <laughs> I would have actually been okay with a no, no call, call there. there. Yeah. I think kind of uh, incidental with their feet a yeah. little bit. I can't imagine calling an offensive foul in that situation where both players are kind of flailing towards the bucket. Uh, you can see Karen Askin is searching for competitors right now. That's why we've seen so many Texas. Longhorns come into the game. She's also got to juggle the foul trouble. Five players with two fouls. It'll stay with Texas here. Ten players, to your point, guys, have already played for Texas in this game. We're seeing Olamide Aborawa, the junior out of Nigeria. She's in the game right now, as is Jada Underwood. And all these players fresh in off the bench get a touch 
everything but the finish, though. And Texas's struggles at the rim continue. Did you see all those pump fakes and spins? That's Lauren Cox. Yeah. I mean, that, that's because Lauren Cox is in there, and nobody wants to get their shot blocked. Boy, Morris has looked smooth with the ball in her hands I like tonight. It. Yeah, huh? I, I like her a lot. She's very confident, very composed, and understands the nuances of the game. And that absolutely was an offensive yep. foul on Brooke McCarty with that left forearm. It's a frustrated Texas team right now offensively. Yeah, I've been impressed with Alexis Morris. The largest deficit that Texas had faced all year was 12 against TCU. They've trailed by as many as 21 tonight. Baylor can essentially hold for the final shot here. Morris putting the moves on Sutton. Still time for Texas. It's McCarty to beat the buzzer. Got it. Maybe a little bit of life going to the break to cut the lead for Baylor to 17 points. First field goal of the night for McCarty on eight shots. Comes at the very end of the first half. Karen Aston frustrated. Baylor rolling. Land Rover halftime report. Maria, Nell, and Andy. Look at that bottom line. Texas, their largest deficit faced all year was in a loss to TCU. It was 12. Baylor held Texas to 9 of 34 shooting and had a 21-point lead at one point. And note the lead time. Last year in two meetings combined, Texas led for all but four minutes in the two meetings that were split last year. Baylor dominated in that first half as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, I spoke with Karen Aston at the half of Texas, and she said she addressed with her team that they're coming down the court and they're trying to attack inside right away. She said, we're not reversing the ball. We've got to get those big post players of Baylor moving side to side, get some seams to open up, and then attack. She also said they're trying to get more of a double screen action going, but she said our players just haven't been patient enough to get some of our actions going. She needs more patience, more aggression from them in the second half. And Holly, Kara and I were talking with Karen Aston about that very specific thing. Why is it so important against the Baylor defense? Oh, great defenses, elite defenses, the way you beat them is by movement. Movement, precision passing, and then the ability to make shots. And Texas didn't really show us any of those three things in the first half. It's very difficult to score on great defenses without having that foundation of movement. They had so much going one on one. It's the reason they only had three assists in that first half. They're just trying to create offensively. Wallace. We want to talk about a player that did just about everything right in that first half. Christy Wallace is one of them. There's a jump shot knocked down for Ariel Atkins. It feels like they're going to have to make at least a few of those to open things up on the offensive end. This will help if they can convert. They do not. You see what Atkins and McCarty did in that first half. Only a combined two for 15. These are the two senior leaders in the backcourt for this Texas team. So much is on their shoulders to lead on the offensive end. Cohen with the elbow jumper. Second game back after she missed the game at Iowa State with a foot issue. That's some foul trouble did Cohen in that first half as well. McCarty blocked by Cox. That is four blocks for Lauren Cox in this game. Leading shot blocker in the Big 12 with 49 this year. And even when she forces a pass, she still finds a teammate. Take away by Texas as they surrounded Cohen. 
Oh, and that was set up for Wallace. Atkins started to go into that shooting motion early, and Wallace was waiting. Uh, I can't say enough things about how good Christy Wallace has been in this game. Transition defense, she's picked up whoever. She's been the aggressor. She's been first to the floor. She's made big-time shots. She's been the best guard in this game, and it really hasn't been close. What's impressive is she's actually sick. She's trying to overcome a cold today, but her energy has been off the chart. She is from Australia. Assistant coach for Baylor, Bill Brock, found her after she lived just a few miles away from a player he'd signed previously, Brooke McGregor. He said, I saw some videotape, went down to see her down under, and she says growing up with three older, older siblings, getting beaten up outside, playing all the kinds of different sports has made her tough and aggressive. Her dad was an Australian football player, and so she feels like her toughness she learned back in the outback has made her a very aggressive player here all the way in Waco, Texas, a long way from home. Yeah, a lot of international experience for Christy Wallace, plays for the U23 team in Australia. I mean, her personality is really effervescent. I mean, it's fun to talk to her. She's almost legendary around the Baylor campus for riding her bicycle onto I-35 and getting lost on one side of town or the other. I'm sure not the case as much anymore now that she's been around for the last four years, but there are some great stories about Wallace, and, man, she is a do-it-all type of player for Baylor. I don't know if you want to ride your bike on I-35. I was nervous driving, actually. <laughs> hey, listen, I've got to drive some very important cargo back to Dallas tonight, all right? Don't make me more nervous. Tough take by Higgs. Kara, nothing is coming easy, to your point, from the first half. Brown, that seems easy for her. I say that was last touch by Atkins. Baylor ball. Joyner Holmes will check in for Jatari White. Holmes, the Big 12 freshman of the year last year, a first teamer as a freshman. As we told you about earlier, suspended for the first 10 games, so still not up to 100%. He's guarding Lauren Cox right now. Wallace fouled by Higgs. That's three on Higgs now. I mean, her experience as well. I mean, she just brings this level of, of toughness. And she's competent in, in every area of the game. And it's just a blow by. I mean, Higgs has got to be able to stay in front. And Holly was talking about, obviously, Christy being Australian. And, you know, a lot of Australians have populated the WNBA over the years. And the one thing that you say about them is their toughness. The one thing that they always bring is a mindset, uh, you know, kind of that blue-collar mindset of, of to do the little things and to be tough. And, you know, Wallace fa falls right in line with a bunch of players that I've had the privilege to play against over the years. Tonight is game number 125 for Christy Wallace. Now a thousand points scored in Baylor history. Relatively clean look for McCarty. She has not shot the ball well tonight. Just one of ten from the floor. That might have been my favorite play of the game so far. Kal Kalani Brown beat everyone down the court and then was waving, come on you guys, hurry up. <laughs> hurry up, get down the court. Couple of chances for Brown that time and unable to convert. And, and you know, in her freshman year, I don't think that happens. You know, here's a player that she's a big kid, but she's gotten in better shape. She's able to get up and down the floor at a, at a faster pace than her first couple seasons at Baylor, and that's helped this team because she can stay in the game and be effective longer. Summer of eighth grade, she told me she went from 5'11 to six foot four. That's when she had her growth spurt. And, you know, she really has gotten much better shape. She estimates she's lost about 30 pounds since she got to college. She said she did a ton of extra running in the offseason on her own, and she's really proud of the shape that her body's in. She's strong. She's able to be uh, aggressive, and I love that she's beating all these little fast guards down the floor. Way to go, big girl. <laughs> she was saying to us earlier today, I like my hips, I like my shoulders, I like my frame. She really is proud of what she's done off the court to be ready to do all the things that she's done on the court. Thank you. 
McCarty. Holmes threw it away. Here's the speed of Alexis Morris, the freshman. Good recovery by Atkins. Tough night for McCarty and the Horns, but some good things happened to Brooke earlier this year. He's just left there on his knee. She gets enveloped by her teammates. Of course, she did say yes. <laughs> Awkward engagement stories from you two, or you want to save those for the drive? What do you think? I will save those for the drive. <laughs> Definitely for the drive. <laughs> I'm not going on the drive. <laughs> we, have the same, we have the same anniversary, though, so we're good. Is that right? Yeah, were you, we guys, were you guys got married on the same date? Yes. Well, to different people. To different people? Okay, yeah, yeah. good to know. Good to know. And different years. Oh, no. Different yeah, different years. years. Yeah. I was just wondering if I have to, do I have to get multiple anniversaries yeah, right. for you guys? Just making sure. <laughs> Is Joyner Holmes off target. Nice recovery by McCarty. That's not an easy thing to do against a good ball handler like Wallace. Morris. Well, that ball was loose. McCarty didn't realize it was loose on the deck. Little pick and roll for Brown. I could just watch Christy Wallace, Wallace play all night. No way she's sprinting end to end. It's unbelievable. I could watch Kalani Brown all night. Wow. Atkins knocks it down. First three-pointer of the night made by Texas comes from Atkins. Texas has not been very good shooting the three after a decent start to the season. Cox to Brown. Look at that thing of beauty. Post to post pass. I mean, take a look at this. Cox gets a double team coming. What does the other post player do when the double goes? You gotta dive. You dive to the block. When you've got a teammate who's second on the team in assists. Lauren Cox, 6'4 post player, has the second most assists on the team. Feeds her other big girl. We were talking with Kalani about it and Lauren about this as well. They played together very briefly in international competition, but Cox said at the time, this is when they were teenagers, Kalani was not nearly the player she is now, but you thought that Cox really shows how easy it can look to play big with big, and she makes it look easy with Kalani Brown. She said we've just developed such a great chemistry. It started in practice a year ago. Brown's got 15 points and eight rebounds tonight. Cox has 15 points and eight rebounds tonight. Those two have been called double trouble by a lot of coaches in the Big 12 and around the country. And you can see why tonight for the third ranked Baylor Lady Bears. White. And Karen Aston will use a timeout. We'll step aside as well. For 5KU, and guess who's going to be down there for like her 19th game in the last like 25 days? Holly Rowe, what you got for Fog Allen this weekend, bud? Well, I'm really excited because Joe Tessitore is calling that game. He's never <laughs> been to Kansas. That's He's right. never been to Texas, so or to Kansas. So it's Joe goes to Kansas. We're going to show him the Naismith rules that are on site there. But more important, Kansas is coming off a loss to Oklahoma. Udoka Azubuke got the uh, hack dope going at the end, and um, he's got to get those free throws corrected, so that's what I've got my eye on. Yeah, you really struggled in the final three and a half minutes. Went one of eight down the stretch from the free throw line. There's McCarty with the bucket. Baylor is sitting as the number three team in the country right now, but they are not, as of now, one of Charlie Cream's number one seats. We'll dive into that as this 
game finishes up with a quarter to play plus. But this is one of their toughest games in quite some time. They had a very strong non-conference schedule last year. It wasn't as strong when you look at the teams now and where they're sitting. Two official top 25 wins for Baylor this year. So this was probably going to be the best barometer for what Baylor is. As you guys watch Baylor tonight, where is that gauge for you? How good is this team right now? Well, they're one of the four best teams in the country. Uh, that doesn't mean that they deserve a number one seed. Sure, you have sure. to take a look at, at Charlie Cream's number three seeds in Baylor. Uh, he has as the number one three seed. Uh, all this is going to work itself out. Of course. Like, I wasn't super fired up about them being even a nine in the reveal in the sense that they haven't even hit the meat of their Big 12 schedule. Starting, they, they haven't hadn't played Texas yet yeah, before. Really, they hadn't played Oklahoma starting State. Starting tonight, they, they hadn't played West yep, Virginia. Absolutely. So they hadn't played TCU yet. There's eight games against NCAA tournament quality teams that are going to bump up all of those measurables. Right. And should Baylor win those, they're they're going to continue to rise up the board. And Baylor's strength of schedule non-conference this year was 125th. And Kim Mulkey understands the makeup of her team. They lost three starters from a year ago. They had some young people coming in into new positions. And so as a result, it was a little lighter schedule. Last year when she had so many seniors, and, and she had a tougher schedule, 43rd in, in their right. non-conference. So it's by design. Their conference, their non-conference schedule by design. May that hurt them in terms of their seating? I think she cares more about the development of her team sure. than she does about that. I mean, think about that. It's January. What's today? It's January 25th. And they still have eight games left on their schedule versus ranked teams. Yep. Because in the Big 12, you play everybody twice. Twice. Well, this is the first matchup against Texas. And so far through three, looking very good. South Carolina dominant tonight behind Asia Wilson, who joins Sheila Foster at South Carolina as the only two players in Gamecock women's basketball history to have 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Wilson's looked good the last two games since missing two games of that ankle injury. Yeah, I'd say 27, 13, and 7. Yeah, it's looking decent. good there, brother. Yeah. They're triple double. She had seven blocks tonight. Just Columbia has become one of the great women's basketball environments. Yep. I mean, Dawn Staley, what she's done with that program on the court, but also what she's done with that program in the community. Absolutely. Leads the country in attendance. We talked with Holly Warlick about playing at Colonial Life Arena last week. The head coach of Tennessee was saying, we had communication problems because the crowd was so good that night. Excellent look. Richards with the easy two, and Baylor continues to roll. Every time the double team comes to the post, whether it's Cox or Brown, they find the cutters, yep. and the cutters are doing a great job of slicing to the basket. Traveling violation on White. Well, after the X Games on ESPN, Scott Van Pelt, host Sports Center, will have his unique take on Tiger's return at Torrey Pines, plus a conversation with Andy North about whether Tiger can still make it happen. All star rosters are selected by LeBron and Steph Curry. And then three days of Senior Bowl practices, Todd McShay will break it all down, talking about Baker Mayfield and potential number one pick, Josh Allen, out of Wyoming. We'll find out from Todd McShay later tonight on Sports Center. I don't know if it's going to show up in the box score tonight, although Richards has had some nice numbers, but her contribution in so many different non-stat sheet ways seems to stick out to me tonight. Yeah, Adam, the thing that's been the most shocking to me about this game is not the hustle that Baylor has displayed, but the differential between Baylor's hustle and Texas's hustle. It feels like Baylor's been everywhere. It feels like Richards has been everywhere, to your point. It feels like Cox has been everywhere, defending her man and her teammates' men. And it doesn't feel like there's a Texas player that's been that, that's been active, that's been making game-changing plays, and that's why they're down 24 points. McCarty would be the one who you would think would bring that energy and that activity, especially on the offensive end. Audrianne Caron Gaudreau just picked up her fifth foul. So she has fouled out tonight. Just two points 
and two rebounds. Average is six and five. You know, it's the, the interesting thing about Texas as you as you look at their roster, and they really do have a lot of pieces to be a very good team. They have experience. They have depth. They have post players. They have guards. And I think Joyner Holmes coming back, a lot of us thought, well, they'll be even better. And I, I think that will be the case if Joyner Holmes plays a certain way. Like, it's just not because she's back doesn't make them better. Right. She has to play a certain way. She has to play discipline. She has to play focus. She has to play with the activity that some of these Baylor players have had. If she's just out there, it doesn't make a difference. And again, try to get back to game speed. They are a little thin. I don't want to say thin tonight because they're so deep. Chastity Patterson didn't make the trip. Yes. She's dealing with the flu. They did just get Callie Ann Karongadro back, but she's not nearly at game speed. She's only played six games, dealing with a stress fracture in her right foot. So some of the pieces that may have been expected to do a little bit more, Holmes included, aren't at that point just yet. Been that type a night for Baylor. And after that foul, Brooke McCarty went in the huddle and was talking to her teammates about what they didn't do right on that. And a big difference for me tonight between Baylor and Texas is the trust that Baylor has on both ends of the floor. They know when a double team comes that if you cut, your big is going to get you the basketball, or that if you're in a pick and roll situation, your defensive help side is going to be there. I haven't gotten that sense from Texas. Right. I mean, can you pinpoint why? Because it's not as if this Texas team is, I mean, they look awful tonight in comparison to Baylor. This is a pretty good team. I mean, they're 15-3 and three well, they coming look, in this year. They look good against UConn. They look they very good. We were there the a week and a half ago. You know, maybe this is who Texas is. You know, you, you look good one night and you're not so good the next. I mean, that, that maybe maybe they're an inconsistent team. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. But all the stuff we're talking about is fixable. Yeah, right. It's fixable. Sure. And it doesn't take 20 practices to fix it. It takes a mindset of how you're going to play and that you're going to be tough. And and if Texas is able to find that, they're scary good too. Absolutely. Just like just like Baylor's scary good. It took UConn down to the wire a week and a half ago. Granted, in Austin at home, Texas has only lost that one game at home this year. Texas has a chance to get back at it. You know, they had Texas Tech, a team that's struggling right now, de uh, working with an interim head coach and Shimmy Gray Miller right now after Candy Whitaker was fired. So that was a bit of a, let's call it a break for Texas in between playing UConn and Baylor. They're going to have another chance this weekend with Iowa State. They go to Kansas next Wednesday, and then you get another test. You'll see a TCU team that's playing really well right now and I think deserves to be in the top 25, a TCU team that, remember, beat Texas a couple of weeks ago. It's not easy in the Big 12. It's you know, an improved we, league. We, we talked about Baylor's schedule and how there's five ranked teams, I believe, in the conference, and it's, it's not easy and night in and night out, and it's different than the other four Power Five conferences in that you play everybody twice. You have to go on the road to every single team in the conference. You know, I was able to go to TCU on Monday, and I had breakfast with Reagan Pebley, their head coach, or Pebley, their head coach, and she was so excited. They just got ranked on Monday for the first time since 2007, and it's great reward for them. They got a big win against this Texas team, and they're making great strides. A brand new arena at TCU, and they're one of the places in the Big 12 that has been late to kind of bloom, but they're starting to bloom with that number 24 ranking. And Holly, you saw their men's team on Monday. You'd never been to a TCU men's home game, if I'm not mistaken, for a big Monday. So. They're putting in the effort on the financial end of things to get that program to where they think it needs to be. Twenty-three a season high for Christy Wallace tonight. And Richards is there to draw another offensive foul. 
Richards brings so much energy on the defensive end, the quickness, the extension of the arm by Atkins results in the foul. Richards might be the one who has almost as much energy as Kim Mulkey during the game. <laughs> ah, yes, the old extension of the coach on the floor. She's literally, I think, on the floor right yeah. now as she's coaching. <laughs> Fresh, yeah. Freshman out of Cypress Ranch, Texas. Richards isn't doing it in heels. <laughs> it's, not, it's not as impressive, Rebecca. Come on. She finds Morris and gets the rebound. Dee Richards, the all-time leading scorer, boys or girls at Cypress Ranch. 2,200 plus points in her high school career. Oh, and for Christy Wallace, that is a new career high. A player who has played 125 games in her Baylor career. This is her best offensive output. There's a three for McCarty. Stay with Baylor. We'll step aside. Been a fun night if you're wearing gold and green. Or teal. Good stuff, Maria. Kara, you saw Tennessee in person the last two games. Obviously against very difficult opponents. We saw them last week. Your thoughts after you saw them on Sunday and where do you think they should go from here with a little bit of an easier schedule coming up? Well, obviously they are a very young team and they have two seniors that are kind of the pillars of their lineup in, in Nard and Russell, but they play like a young team at times. And I thought Mississippi State was very experienced, was tougher. And, and outplayed them considerably. So I, I don't think Tennessee's an elite team right now. Again, doesn't mean they can't be come March. Right. Just like we were talking about Texas's issues being fixable. Uh, but I don't think they're an elite team right now. Yeah, Rebecca, you kind of said the same thing on Sunday. We were in studio together watching that game against Mississippi State. Potential not reached just yet. Yeah, but Mississippi State, now that's a team that a looks really good. good right now. Still unbeaten. Matching their best start in program history from a season ago. The incredible run that Vic Schaefer's team had to the national championship game. And, of course, a lot of that core returning this year. Now this is a much better offensive team than Vic Schaefer has this year in Mississippi State. Not as good a, of a defensive sure, team. Sure, sure. Yeah, Victoria Vivians look very sharp once again on Sunday. Tierra McCowan, 6'7 inside. So how about if, if they match up against Baylor? Uh, how about that? I'd like to see that. Listen, you, you, Brown. You, if, if that if that gets locked in right now, I think any of us as basketball fans would take that matchup to watch. And Saturday on ESPN, fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Ten games for you across the ESPN networks. We'll highlight our ESPN schedule with Oklahoma. Trey Young, really good distribution on Monday night. Got his teammates involved. Holly will be with Joe Tessitore and Sean Farnham down at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. And Kentucky's been struggling a little bit as of late. But they got to win the other night on Tuesday. They'll have to go to a very tough environment. Take on that. Very difficult defense of West Virginia that can get it done on the offensive end as well. Good triple header on ESPN coming up. Right in the thick of conference play for men's and women's basketball right now. The Big 12 looks good on the women's side as well. I don't know if I'd call it a resurgence by any means. Big 12 has been consistent at the top. But the depth of this league, as we were talking about earlier, has been much more apparent. Kara, how would you handle it if you're a guard or a forward coming over help side on Kalani Brown? You play Matador, you foul the heck out of her, what do you do? I wouldn't go over. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, uh, 
They're driving, they're driving. I didn't see him, coach. <laughs> I didn't see him. What, what about, well, you know, I want to I hear from you, though, Lobo. I mean, that's, that's a, that is an interesting question because how do you guard six foot seven with strength and skill? Uh, you, you saw some effective play defensively by Joyner Holmes when she was using her quickness to try to get around in three quarter front. You, you can't play behind, you're done if you play behind. And oftentimes you, you're taught, you know, just beat him to the spot. The problem is you can beat Brown to the spot and she'll bump you right off of it because right. she's going to be bigger and stronger. So it's a situation you're going to need some help. And you need the guards to really be up on the passers and try to limit the ball and their vision to try to get the ball inside. Well, Kalani Brown comes by that great frame. Honestly, her father, P.J. Brown, of course, a great journeyman in the NBA. Her mother at 6'3 was a great player at Louisiana Tech for Kim Mulkey was her coach. And, you know, she was actually 11 years old when her father won an NBA championship. She remembers so much of his career and all the hard work and the little things he had to do to be a journeyman in the league. She tries to do those little things despite having being blessed with such a big frame. And I think the combination of the two is what's making her special. She, she does the down and dirty stuff, but she's also got that beautiful frame. If you guys have a chance, go to the ESPN.com page for Baylor women's basketball. You'll find front row. You'll find Holly's sit down. With Kalani Brown, you really get to dive into the mind and the workings of Brown. You mentioned it, Holly. Her mom was a very good player and was actually recruited by Kim Mulkey to play at Latte. Six foot three. I was gonna just tell you the other thing I love about Kalani is she's this big giant gal. She is a softie. She loves to watch at least one movie a week that makes her cry. She says she loves getting in her feels. And um, her, her re most recent one was Lovely Bones. So she's a big, big softie at heart. She has fouled out, but to a great ovation. The crowd appreciates that big giant gal, Holly Rowe, as we all do. She creates a problem. And there are a lot of great players around the country. I don't know that there's a harder matchup to deal with than Kalani Brown. I'm not saying she's the best player in the country, but when you're trying to figure out what are you going to do and how are you going to guard her, she's, she's got to yeah. be close to the top of the list. And the problem is compounded because she's got Lauren Cox Absolutely. right there. Which wasn't as big of an issue last year if you were defending Baylor because, as we talked to Lauren about, it wasn't as big of a role a season ago. Even though she was the number one player, Lauren Cox, out of high school, it wasn't her time at that moment with Davis and Prince. And I mean, you had such talent, especially in that backcourt. This is the perfect fit for Lauren Cox to just about do everything in this offense and on defense. Lost in the Elite Eight last year to Mississippi State in overtime. That was the incredible Morgan William performance where she put down 41 three days after the passing of her stepfather. But after that loss, Kim Mulkey said, our expectations are higher than the Elite Eight. We have to keep feeding that monster we started 17 years ago. Indicating when Kim Mulkey took over as the head coach of Baylor, two national championships including the incredible 40-0 run in 2012. But since then, they've been shut out, including the last four NCAA tournament runs ending one step away from the Final Four. So if there is anything driving this Baylor team, as if there wasn't enough in terms of expectation, four straight Elite Eight losses. I think the scoreboard may be incorrect in-house. It has it at 81-52, but the proper score is 81-54. Again, the smallest margin of victory for Baylor in its 17 wins was 22 this year. Just shellacking teams, and this tonight Arguably their toughest test since facing UCLA without Lauren Cox or Kim Mulkey on the sideline They have made a big statement here in Waco Huge 
Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about their performance uh, when you talk about offensively, uh, how they were able to play, how efficient they were able to be, how they were able to involve both Cox and Brown, which they do every game, but every team gears up to try and stop them, the hustle plays, and then, of course, defensively. Uh, I mean, Texas is shooting 29% from the field. They haven't been able to score against this Baylor defense. Still trying to figure out this scoreboard issue. You, know, you guys were discussing it. Holly brought it up as well. Just the size of Kalani Brown and the size of Baylor. How do you defend the almost undefendable? I think this is a fair way to go about it. This, I, I just go get the Gumby. I go get the Gumby guy. And you just throw that on the floor. How about the brilliant camera work by Holly Brown? <laughs> Guys, this but took 30 seconds between Holly coming in for Baylor men's basketball practice earlier today, looking at that piece of equipment and saying, we got to make something out of that. And sure enough, that's what happened. It took a half a minute for Holly to make that happen. And that's about what it looks like. Me against Gumby <laughs> is what it looks like for most offensive players trying to go up against Kalani Brown. Yep. I just want to let you know the the left-handed fin finger roll would not have made it over Kalani Brown. <laughs> you need a little bit stronger of a move there, B. It, it, it would have been a hook shot. It would have been a hook. Listen, it would have been I will right. say this in terms of strength. The shoulder, the, it, it got me in the Are chest. Are you all right? I've been worried. I'm still coughing up a little bit right now. It's not a pleasant physical experience. <laughs> Banked in by Aborowa. Foul call, I believe. Okay. Let's see. Another stoppage here late in the game. I just love that Kim Mulkey is telling the officials, don't look no, at it. Don't look at it. We're ready to go. <laughs> we're, we're, we want this game to be over. As if she's the one who can dictate so to them whether or not they go to the monitor. You know, Karen asked him to bring that up at one point, as Holly aptly reported to us. Said, hey, don't, don't don't let her dictate what's happening on the floor. Let's see here, Christy Wallace right there. I think that's the second time, if I'm not mistaken, that Wallace has been involved in one of those, taking one of the chops. Bit of a rocky night at the office for <laughs> Wallace, but I think she'll take a career high 27 points along with four assists and six rebounds Kalani Brown ended with 17 and 11 Another double-double for her That's her eighth of the season Lauren Cox had 17 and 10 her ninth double-double of the season Those were the three that accounted for the bulk of the damage for the Baylor Lady Bears tonight. And since the loss to UCLA, this is going to be 15 consecutive wins for Baylor. And these two teams will meet again on February the 19th in Austin, Texas. A statement made in a 25-point win for the Baylor Lady Bears over Texas. The former colleagues Kim Mulkey and Karen Aston will meet again in a few weeks. Frustrating night for Karen Aston and the crew from Austin. That is now 69.